we have been talking about dynamic programming and maximum principle for the past uh, couple of weeks and today i'm going to do a quick application of this theorem for a very simple uh, application and show you how exactly uh, this these two algorithms work on on an actual dynamic system so this is a very uh, commonly used model for resource allocation. Okay, um, it has applications to our day-to-day -day activities as well. And so the idea is I'm starting with an initial wealth of X naught. So this is one of the first models for resource allocation. I think it was studied probably in 1930s or 20s, uh, but it's it's a very common problem across a wide range of economic issues. So you have an initial wealth of X naught dollars or X naught, uh, uh, so wealth could be of course X naught barrels of oil or X naught uh, uh, barrels of mineral or, or X naught uh, tons of mineral resources, or it could be X naught dollars of money that you have in your bank account. And so on, on an everyday basis, you are extracting some amount of this wealth and you're utilizing it for your uh, daily needs. So the state evolves as xt plus one equals to xt minus ut. So this is my state transition function, xt minus ut. So I have, I have the wealth xt at time t and I'm taking out ut amount of money uh, from there and I'm going to spend it on, you know, food or clothing or whatever other needs I may have. And at the next time step, I'll be left with XT plus one amount of money. And the cost function, oh, so in this case, I have a reward function. So let me, uh, I hope you don't confuse between the cost and reward. So I have a reward function that I want to maximize. So J which would be a function of either strategies or it could be a function of actions, depending on whether we are looking for open loop policies or closed loop policies. So the reward is actually going to be the summation of T equals zero to T minus one, log of UT plus log of XT. Okay, you can of course put uh, different multipliers, the coefficients in front of these log values but I'm not going to do that just to keep the math simple. So what are we trying to promote through this reward function? Well, at the end of my time, uh, I want to have some money to myself at the end of the week or month or, or at the end of retirement. But at the same time, uh, I want to be able to use the resources today in order to improve my well-being. But the issue is the it so in this case, the way you accrue benefit as a function of your expenditure is actually tapering off. Okay. So the more you expend, uh, the more reward you get, but you don't really get that high marginal reward as you start spending more and more money. So in the initial phases, you get a lot of reward for spending a little bit amount of money, but at the later phases, just spending a little bit more doesn't really increase your benefit or reward that much. So it's sort of a tapering curve and, uh, and, and that's captured by this log of UT, log of consumption plus the log of the endowment at the end of the terminal uh, step, time step. Okay, is the model clear? So this is my running, this is my terminal cost CT of XT, and this is my running cost CT of XT comma UT. So my running cost here doesn't depend on XT, but I'm just gonna keep XT here because I've been using it throughout this, uh, the two lectures. Okay, and so the idea is how do you want to, what's the optimal way of allocating resource or allocating wealth over T time steps? 
Okay, does this, uh, do you have, any, anyone has any questions on this model, resource allocation model? Okay, great. Uh, no questions here. So, uh, so X naught could be the initial uh, amount of mines that you have or initial amount of oil that you have and so on. So it's really very useful across a wide range of economic activities. So X naught could also be the amount of money you have in your bank account at the beginning of month. And you have to decide on your expenditure over the period of month so that at the end of the month, you have some leftover money in your account, but at the same time you have used the money on an everyday basis on, on activities that you think will give you maximum benefit. Okay, so what we are going to do now is we are going to solve this problem using the minimum principle uh, that we talked about. And we are also going to solve this problem uh, using the dynamic programming approach. And then we will try to juxtapose the two solutions side by side to see what exactly is happening along the optimal trajectory. Okay. So let's apply the maximum principle or Pontryagin minimum principle. No, actually this will be maximum because we are maximizing a reward. So if for that, in order to apply Pontryagin maximum principle, I need to define my Hamiltonian Okay, so this is my Hamiltonian, HT. Now, what all things do I need to know? What should I compute first? So let's compute the uh, backward uh, propagation to compute the value of PT. So I have what's the value of P capital T? Can someone tell me? One over XT. Yeah, one over XT. What about the T? equals to gradient of xt ht. What is that equal to? Would that just be pt plus one? Yeah, that's PT plus one. Okay, so this means that my PT is equal to one over XT for all T. Pretty straightforward equation. Okay. Now we want to compute u star t. So u star t is supposed to be 
so at u so gradient of u t h t at optimal trajectory should be equal to zero. This is true both for minimum as well as maximum problem. So this is a maximization problem. So uh, the the derivative of the Hamiltonian must be zero, even at the maximizing point. And this would imply. What is gradient of ut of ht? So that's minus pt plus 1 plus 1 over ut star equals to 0. What does this imply? My ut star must be 1 over pt plus 1 star, which is equal to xt star. <laughs> so I get the second expression. This is again true for all t. So I did the backward propagation to compute the uh, co-state vector. I used the stationary stationarity of the Hamiltonian at the optimal trajectory, used that expression to get the optimal trajectory as a function of the co-state vector, which turns out to be a constant uh, function of the optimal savings at the end of the entire horizon. Now, it doesn't yet give us the optimal action, right? So all we know is optimal action in terms of the final state. How do I compute the actual value of optimal action? What's missing right now? What are we missing? We have the co-state vector. We have the u star as a function of co-state vector. What have we not done so far? Well, we haven't done forward propagation yet, right? So that's still something we need to do. So let's do the forward propagation with this u star. So I have x1 equals to x0 minus xt star x2 equals to x1 minus xt star, x0 minus 2xt star, and so on, right? So I have xt, well, uh, let me put the optimal trajectory part here. So this is the optimal trajectory, just so we know. So I have xt star equals to xt minus one star, minus xt star and this is equal to x naught minus t xt star so my optimal action u0 u1 all of that is equal to xt star based on this this expression so i substituted it here and I get x naught minus t x t star should be equal to x t star. So what do we get?
Okay, any questions so far? So what do we what did we learn from this process? So we learned that at every point of time, remember ut star is equal to xt star. So at every point of time, you are going to spend x naught over t plus one amount of resource. Um, and then you're going to keep the rest for the next time step. And at the end of the time horizon, you will have x naught over t plus one amount of resource left over. Um, if you have followed the optimal trajectory throughout the process. Okay, so let me write down. Um, so my UT star is going to be X naught over T plus one. And my XT star is going to be X naught minus T xt star which is equal to this is going to be my optimal trajectory Okay, if there are any questions, please let me know now. Actually, one, one thing that I forgot to introduce is at every point of time, you cannot spend more than what you have. So UT has to be less than equal to XT. It has to be greater than equal to zero. Okay, so that's a constraint we have on our decision process. But as you saw, we don't really need to invoke this constraint because we get a, this is a convex problem. So we get a global minimum. Uh, which is within the constraint set. So we don't really have to enforce that constraint while doing the optimization. That's just for this problem. In general, you will have to enforce those constraints when you're doing this uh, maximum principle-based analysis. Okay, so no questions so far. So please remember this optimal trajectory. We'll get back to it in a bit. And now we will apply dynamic programming to the same problem. So I want to maximize J of gamma zero to gamma T minus one, which is summation of CT X T U T, or let me just write the whole expression. Summation of log of U T plus log of X T. Okay. What should I do for dynamic programming? Well, I need to define the terminal value function and then I have to keep running the Bellman equation uh, backward in order to compute the optimal strategy as well as the optimal value function at every point of time. So before I uh, start running the dynamic programming, let me just uh, solve a very simple optimization problem because we'll keep referring to this optimization problem again and again. So I have, I want to maximize over zero less than u less than x log of u plus log of x minus u or c log of x minus not c c is already used i need a constant a log of x minus u we haven't used a so far right yeah i don't think a is used okay so a is some constant and i want to maximize the sum of this two sum of log functions how should I go about solving this problem? 
So first of all, you will notice that this is a convex problem. So what should we do? It's a bit tricky. This is a constraint optimization problem. But I want someone to argue that actually we can remove the constraint without any problem. Who wants to argue why we don't need to worry about the constraint? Uh, both the logarithms exist only uh, within the constraint set. Right, right, right. So log of zero is infinity and log of x minus x is infinity. That's right. So so this max or minus infinity, I should say. So this basically function looks something like something like this. This is x and this is zero, of course. So how should we go ahead and find the optimal point u star and the optimal value? Someone wrote something in the chat. Set the first derivative with respect to u to zero. Yeah, set the first derivative with respect to u to zero. That's right. So I have one over u star. One over u star plus a over, no, there has to be a negative sign. X minus u star, that's equal to zero. Okay, so how do we solve it? I think it's easy to solve. So I have a u star plus x minus u star. No. Yeah, equals to zero. So I have u star equals to one over a plus one x. Okay. Good, so I got one solution, which is this solution. Now I need to find the optimal value as well for this maximum of the sum. So we can substitute u star in that objective function to arrive at the following expression. X minus U star, what is X minus U star? That's A over A plus one X. So I have A over A plus one. Okay, so at the optimal value, I have some constant. Let me write B of A, which is a constant that depends on A plus a plus one log x. Okay, so b of a doesn't depend on x at all. And the only term that depends on x is this a plus one log x term. Okay, any question so far on this optimization, one step optimization? Okay, no further questions. So now let's apply. So this is uh, an optimization problem that we'll have to repeatedly solve in order to solve this dynamic programming equation. So let's apply this 
optimization solution to the dynamic program. So I have V of capital T of XT equals to log of XT. Then I have VT minus one XT minus one equals to max. So remember in the, if I had a cost function, I would do a minimum here, but because I have a reward function, I'm doing a maximum over UT minus one of So this is the current reward. This is the VT composition FT. What should the solution be? Can someone tell me what the solution to this maximization problem is? Uh, constant plus uh, 2 ln uh, 6t minus 1. Right. So some constant bt minus 1 plus 2 log xt minus 1. Okay. So that's that's the value function. And I have to also figure out what gamma star t minus 1 of xt minus 1 is. And that's xt minus 1 over 2. I think, right? Yeah, one over a plus one x. Yeah, so xt minus one over two. Okay, so I have the value function at time t minus one and I have the, I have the strategy, optimal strategy at time t minus one. Perfect. Any questions so far on the backward induction? So this is the first step of the backward induction. I defined the terminal value function, which is log of xt. And then I solved the one step optimization problem, which is the Bellman, uh, it's called the Bellman operator. So I applied the Bellman operator to the terminal value function and I got the value function at time t minus one. And I also got the optimal policy at time t minus one. Perfect. Now I can continue, of course, I can keep doing it again and again. So let's try to compute VT minus one, oh, sorry, VT minus two of XT minus two. That is max over UT minus two of log of vt minus one so that's constant bt minus one plus two log xt minus two minus ut minus two okay so this is a constant this is of course vt minus one composition ft minus two yeah and this is my c of t minus two And because this is a constant, it doesn't really participate in the optimization because it doesn't depend on the underlying variable ut minus two. So I can kind of ignore it. And then the rest of the uh, term is basically exactly the same as the one step optimization problem we had solved earlier. And because of that, I can just write this solution vt minus one to be some bt minus two plus, so this is the constant plus what? What would the solution to this optimization problem be? Three ln uh, xt minus two. Right.
in the similar uh, vein, I can write the gamma star to be one over three x t minus two. So looks like there is a pattern that is emerging, right? So I can write gamma star of t of x t to be one over t minus t plus one x t. That's my optimal strategy. So this pattern matching is pretty common in dynamic programming. So you kind of solve the problem for the last uh, two time step. And then you see if there is a pattern emerging or not. And if the pattern is emerging, you kind of capture it. And then you do your favorite proof by induction. Now you can do the proof by induction to show that this is indeed the optimal strategy and the optimal value function at time t. So the optimal value function is some constant plus t minus, so capital T minus small t plus one log of x t. And the optimal strategy is just one over capital T minus t plus one x t. Okay, let me reiterate the step. So I have this uh, I have this cost function uh, as a function of strategy or the performance index as a function of strategy. I want to find the optimal strategy, which is maximizing this performance index. So I solve some intermediate optimization problem as a detour because it helps us in getting the solution quickly when we are doing the dynamic program. And then I started running the dynamic program by determining the terminal value function and then computing Vt minus one gamma star T minus one. We applied the dynamic programming step once more. We got Vt minus two and gamma star T minus two. And we saw that there is a pattern that's coming up in the expression for Vt and gamma star. So we tried to capture that expression here in gamma star Xt and Vt of Xt. And uh, you can of course prove it by induction. We are not going to do it right now, but you can see that it actually um, matches for the expression for Vt minus one, Vt minus two and V capital T. So uh, you can do the proof by induction to show that this is indeed the optimal solution. Okay. Now the question is, uh, we have two optimal solutions now. One is the open loop optimal solution where we know that U star is actually x naught over capital T plus one. But here the optimal policy turns out to be some proportional, uh, something that's proportional to xt, okay? And that proportionality factor is changing with respect to time. What do you think is going to happen to the optimal action that will actually get executed on the, during the activity, during this optimization activity? So what's the, this, what's the difference between U star T that we found using Pontryagin maximum principle and the gamma star T XT that I'm finding with this dynamic programming approach? What's the relation? What's the difference? How do you think, what, what do you think will happen? I, I just want to write down what your wild guesses are going to be. And then we'll see what actually happens in terms of the optimal solution and optimal trajectory. So what do you think is going to happen?
what's the wild guess number one? Will Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, U of T uh, will depend on X of T. U of T won't depend on X T. Uh, I, I don't see what does that mean. So I have a U star T, which is a specific value. So this is X naught over T plus one. And this is something which is one over T minus T plus one X T. Okay, let me give it another name. Let me call it V star T. Well, actually it's not V star T because this X T is not the optimal trajectory. Okay, so I can't write V star T because I haven't written X T as the optimal trajectory. Anything else? Any any wild guesses? What should the relationship between these two things be? Okay. So I'm going to give you the two cool results. So cool results. The first is it turns out that u star t will be gamma star t x star t. So this is the this is the optimal trajectory uh, using the dynamic programming. And this is of course the optimal action, open loop action using Pontryagin maximum principle, PMP. Okay, so whatever optimal open loop action you found through Pontryagin maximum principle, it turns out that that's exactly equal to the optimal trajectory that you would have that uh, so, optimal action that you would implement if you were on the optimal trajectory uh, using the dynamic programming equation. So that's number one. Number two, what we will see shortly is gradient of Vt x star t is equal to V star t. In other words, the optimal, the derivative of the optimal value function is exactly equal to the uh, co-state vector in the dynamic pro in the maximum principle equation. Okay, we'll see it for this particular application, but this holds more generally for deterministic dynamic program that we are considering. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's look at the optimal trajectory. Using dynamic programming. So I have X T plus one equals to X T minus gamma star T X T, which is X T or let me write X star T. So this is X star T minus one over t minus t plus one x star t. What is that equal to? Okay, so I have x t star, sorry, x t plus one star is equal to some multiplier multiplied by x t star. Is this step clear to everyone? 
I want to hear a few yeses. It's not clear. Okay, great. Uh, so let's think about So I have x2 star or x1 star equals to t minus 0 over t minus 0 plus 1 x0 equals to t over t plus 1 x0 x2 star equals to t minus 1 over t minus 1 plus 1 x1 star Okay, so I can continue doing this operation and what I will get at is my XT star is going to be T minus T plus one over T plus one X naught. This is my optimal trajectory. Now what is gamma star t, x star t? That's equal to t minus t plus one over t plus one into x naught multiplied by one over t minus t plus one. And this gets canceled. And what I have is X naught over T plus one. Okay, so along the optimal trajectory, which I obtained using the dynamic programming equation, along the optimal trajectory using DP, the action that I'm going to execute is exactly equal to the action I'm going to execute if I were using the maximum principle based approach. So I'm getting the same solution, no matter what, along the optimal trajectory. And that's the most important thing. Along the optimal trajectory, I'm getting the same solution for using both these techniques. Okay, now let's look at the second assertion. So my VT gradient of XT VT of XT, this is equal to, I forgot what the VT was. Let me check quickly. Uh, okay, T minus T plus one log XT. So T minus T plus one over XT. There's a constant term, but the gradient of the constant term will be zero. So the gradient of the value function itself is going to be T minus T plus one over XT. So if I have, if I substitute X star T here, What do I get? I get X naught over, no, T plus one over X naught. What am I doing?
t plus 1 over x naught. Okay. What's the value of p star t? Let's go back to Pontryagin maximum principle. So I know that the value of x star t is actually x naught over t plus one and pt is equal to one over xt star. So pt star would be equal to one over xt star. So combining that, this is actually one over x capital T star, which is equal to pt star. So we have this We have verified this relationship as well. So the gradient of the value function along the optimal trajectory is the same as the co-state vector at that time. And the optimal action along the optimal trajectory using DP is the same as the optimal action, uh, optimal open loop action using the maximum principle. Okay, so that's the fascinating connection between the solution you obtain from dynamic programming and from the solution you obtain from maximum principle. Now think about a real system and tell me, so think about a real system, let's, let's think about a real system such as driving a vehicle. So that's a dynamic problem and we have to drive our vehicle and we have the option of using open loop strategy, optimal open loop strategy, which is I'm going to keep my eyes closed and I'm going to drive my car from my home to my office or, or the parking lot at OSU. And the second strategy that I have is optimal closed loop policy where I'm going to look at my surrounding, I'm going to be attentive, I'm going to keep my eyes and ears open, and I'm going to take the optimal trajectory going from home to my office. Okay, and it turns out that I'll be using the same set of path, right? Because that's the shortest path from me, for me to get from my home to office. And what we have just discussed is actually the optimal trajectory is going to be the same, sorry, the optimal action is going to be same along the optimal trajectory. So why should I not close my eyes and drive my car to the office given that I'm going to be along the same, like the optimal traject, optimal action is going to be the same, no matter whether I keep my eyes open or I keep my eyes closed. So where is, what, what have I done wrong in my argument? What do you think? The assumption that you have all the information at the beginning. Right, so I have all the information. I have the initial state of the traffic at the beginning. So yeah, I have the traffic information at the beginning of, like when I'm getting out of my house, I can just look up Google Maps and I get to know the traffic information. Because we know FT, Right, we know FT, yeah. So should I keep my eyes closed and drive or should I keep my eyes open and drive? Come on, someone should stop me from keeping my eyes closed and drive. <laughs> it seems to me that your unanimous decision is I should I should keep my eyes closed and drive. <laughs> Someone please talk me out of it. Oh, Professor, your argument is kind of valid for linear time invariant systems, right? But when it comes to time variant no, systems- I think I've, I've, I've introduced the dynamic programming for like general time varying system. So FT, I, I have always written FT and not F, which is independent of T. Yeah, yeah, correct. Right.
Okay, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Is that because if, if you know FT uh, well, then you can close your eye and drive? Right. Yeah, but, but for the vehicle, I know what FT is, right? I mean, I exactly know that if I press my accelerator, you know, the vehicle will accelerate. And if I decrease, like if I brake, then the vehicle will stop. So FT is something that I kind of know about my vehicle. I have been driving it for like 10 years now. Yeah, but then uncertain uncertainty is noise. Ah, the like probability, stochasticity. Good, good. Okay, so what happens due to stochasticity? So basically your point is that there are other vehicles on the road or traffic lights on the road. So even if I know uh, everything at the beginning of time, you know, somebody might have taken a left turn or a right turn or whatever, and, and, and things might change on the road. So that's the stochasticity part, so some uncertain variable, right? So what, how, how does that change things when I'm driving on the road? Change your optimal trajectory. Great. Yeah, that's right. So I won't be on the optimal trajectory anymore because of the uncertainty. So even though maximum principle tells me that this is the optimal open loop trajectory, it doesn't give me the U star T as a function of X. And as much as I would like to keep my eyes closed and sleep and you know reach my office, I can't do that pre predominantly because there is uncertainty in the system and because of that uncertainty, I will no longer be on the optimal trajectory as soon as I start driving the system, as soon as I start driving my car, right? So I will be off that optimal trajectory. And therefore, in order to get onto the optimal trajectory, I'll always have to employ dynamic programming, okay? And, and I have to compute my optimal policy as a function of state and based on the current state. So the current state that I'll be at would be a perturbation of the original optimal trajectory I had envisioned I will be on, right? So it's a slight perturbation, but I still need to make the course correction while I'm driving. And, and that's why I need to keep my eyes open and drive. Okay, so thank you for talking me out of it. Otherwise, that's what I would have done to, to, <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's the real reason. And this sort of, uh, and so it's not like this is the only, like driving is the only situation. So there are lots of examples where there are inherent uncertainties in the system. And because of that, you always want to employ dynamic programming, but because of the complexity of the you know, optimization that you need to perform while doing dynamic programming, you tend to not do dynamic programming and frequently do PMP, apply the back propagation algorithm to compute the optimal trajectory, uh, optimal action, optimal open loop action, and then you implement it and then you recompute the optimal open loop action based on the new state that you observe around you. Okay, so that's uh, the uh, overall way how uh, the PMP is applied in the real world. And nowadays with more sophisticated computing power and better infrastructure and cloud connectivity, you can hope to do closed loop driving uh, in, in the sense that you can have an optimal strategy and you can execute that optimal strategy in order to get to your destination or in order to control the plant. And uh, this issue is known as time consistency, the one that we talked about right now. And that's the topic for uh, discussion on Wednesday, where we will talk about time consistency of the optimal policies. And on, 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 on Wednesday, I'm also going to talk about how humans are inherently time and inconsistent players. So they don't have time consistency at all in their decision process. And we'll do some fun experiments, you know, over Zoom. Uh, and, and we'll try and see whether, um, We'll try and see some evidence of time inconsistency in optimal decision making in human beings and how that differs from the optimal decision, make, decision making in uh, machines, which are sort of what is called rational, uh, you know, maximizing 
systems. So that's all I have for today. Uh, we'll talk uh, on Wednesday. Uh, another important announcement is that the TA will not be holding office hours on Wednesday, but the assignment is due on Wednesday. So I'll be holding TA's office hours on Wednesday morning. And uh, we'll discuss any questions you may have on the assignment. So, um, so I'll see you guys on Wednesday during the TA office hours as well as during the regular class hours. Uh, are there any questions on what we did today or no questions? Okay, see you guys on Wednesday then.